So um, here we are back at this page again. So when we're talking inventory, is we're going to be based off of an average cost per item, where we total up our total cost of all our purchases that we've made, and we divide it by the total quantity that we purchased, okay, to get us our average cost per item. So in this case, we don't care what batch came first and we don't care what batch came last. All we care about is just grouping them all together and calculating what it cost us overall. So we're taking our overall cost and spreading it evenly amongst all the items that we actually purchased. Okay? So once again, we have this scenario here where June 1st, we purchased 100 toys and then another uh, purchase here on June 11th for another 100 toys. And then again, June 15, we have a total of 80 toys available. So once again, we're going to do the same thing where we do our purchase expense, okay, and our freight expense here, okay? And then we're going to plug our numbers into our inventory worksheet, okay? So um, here, right, on June 1st, we purchased a total of 100 toys at $1.25 with the freight costing $25, okay? So there you go, purchase price, right, as we know is going to be your quantity times your unit price, which in this case, a 100 times $1.25 will give you $125, plus your freight of $25 should give you your total cost of $150, which then again, your, your cost per item here it is okay to do the cost per item because in this case, right, we're assuming that this is the only batch that we are, are having and that will be it's the only batch that we purchase. So therefore, I only have a total cost of 150 and I have a total um, quantity of 100. So in this case, I'm going to solve for my cost per item, which is right here, okay, because that's the only batch of inventory that I have, okay. But then when we talk about having a second batch of inventory, right, uh, we have a total of, on June 11th, we purchased another 100 toys, again, at $1.28. You need to figure that out for your journal. But this is where it becomes different. So this is where I'm going to plug my numbers in, right? I'm going to solve just as usual until I get to my cost per item, which in this case, right, my purchase price is, once again, $1.28. And then my freight is going to be a total of 154. Now here is where you have to stop because this is where we need to calculate our totals because we don't have a cost per item anymore. We don't care which batch came first and which batch came last. We care about our grand total bundle. So in this case, right, even if we solve for this for 154, it doesn't matter in this case because we're not gonna sell them as separate batches. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start totaling up our quantities, okay? So in this case, right, we know that June 15 is the end of our given period, but in this case, now I have available amount of 200 items, right, at a total of $304, okay? So with that being said, right, now, since we don't care which batch came first or which batch came last, we care about the total quantity, right? Now we're going to be solving for our average cost per item, which in this case, right, um, I have a total of $304 and I have a total of 200 items. So in this case, I take my um, total total cost and divided by my total quantity to get me a grand total of a dollar and fifty two cents each item okay so in this case right my first batch a um, averaged out to a dollar fifty each and my second batch averaged out to a dollar fifty four cents each right now you could also do the same thing where you can add your um, the, the two costs together and divide them by two, and you would get the same thing here where um, you'll get an average cost of $1.52. But in this case, it's just more easier to just understand that we can just take our total quantity and our total cost to be able to solve for the exact number. So in this case, that means 
no matter how much I sell, right? Whether it's I sell 50 or I sell um, 150, right? It's still gonna cost me a dollar and 52 cents per item that I sell. So this is taking the total cost, right? And spreading it amongst across every single item individually that we have available. Okay, so in this case, this is my average cost, which is $1.52 each, okay? So I have one batch for um, super cheap, and then I have one batch that's kind of expensive. So now this is right in the middle, okay? That's what average means. It's right in the middle. So then now that we have our numbers, we're going to go ahead and use them to plug it in once again to our table, which, once again... Um, the assumption here is that we plug it in, our net purchases, we're assuming we have no returns or allowances, to get us our total of 200 items available at 304, okay? And of course, we're given that on June 15, we had a total of 80 toys available. So now we need to solve for our um, cost of goods sold, which in this case, right, we know if it's going to be um, that we had a total of 80 um, items left in inventory, right? It's pretty simple. 200 minus 80 gives you 120. Now we need to solve for the actual cost of goods sold uh, cost. So in this case, right, since we know that each item is $1.52, right, by looking at our window here, right, our goods available, which is 200 items, um, at 304, which gives us an average cost of $1.52, it's pretty straightforward. All we have to do is take our 120 times it by $1.52 to get a total of $182.40. Okay, and of course, to find the answer after that, right, is to either do 80 times $1.52, or you could take your goods available at 304 and subtract the uh, cost of goods sold of 182.40 to get a total of 121.60, okay? All right, any questions here? Okay. This is one of the simplest ones because we don't need to worry about what came first and what came last. In this case, we need to just care, care for one number and that's the average cost, okay? Now, of course, because we're dealing with periodic inventory, once again, you must complete your conversion entry, which, again, by solving the inventory worksheet to it to its co to completely, then you'd be able to plug in the numbers into your journal to reflect your conversion from ex your uh, purchase expense into actual inventory. Okay. So, what happens when we have beginning inventory? Well. When we have beginning inventory right here, right, because on June 15, right, we're going to carry that amount over, okay, so that's that's a typo right there. Uh, we had 80 toys at a 121.40, uh, so in this case, right, uh, we're going to carry that amount over into our inventory worksheet. Now, once again, that is on your um, extra part of your inventory worksheet, okay? And then we made a few additional purchases along the way, okay? So once again, we're gonna plug in our numbers here. Once again, uh, we purchased 100 toys at $1.27, okay? And we had freight of 25 to give us a total of $1.52. Here, you could solve for the cost per item, but it doesn't matter at this point because we have beginning inventory, right? we're making purchases of more inventory. So therefore, that cost per item doesn't even matter because at the end of the day, we're gonna recalculate that to get an average cost per item, okay? okay. So here we're gonna plug in our second batch of uh, inventory here that we purchased, okay? Not what we have on hand, but we are purchasing another batch of inventory. So there we go. A dollar, uh, or so here, so it cost me a dollar thirty and um, plus twenty six dollars of freight gives me a total of one fifty six. Okay, so then of course, what you're going to do is you're going to total up your um, net purchases. Okay, and then once again, we're going to plug it into our table, and this is where 
we are is going to be a little different because um, you know now our numbers right we have our purchase net purchases right but this time we have beginning inventory which we carried over here to be 121.60 okay so because we have that right we need to solve for our goods available which in this case, right, is going to be a grand total of a hundred, uh, 280 items available for a grand total of $429.60, okay? So with that being placed into a consideration that we have a total goods available, that is where we're going to solve for our average cost per item, okay? But we were given that on June 30th, we have a total of... Um, 60 toys available, okay? So we're going to take those 60 toys, right, to solve for our total cost of goods sold, which once again, okay, so in this case, um, right, we have a total of 280, and we have 60 items left, so therefore, we must have sold 220, okay? So once again, now that we have our goods available, that is where we're going to recalculate to solve for our average cost per item. So we have a total of $429.60 in grand total of inventory, right? And we have a total quantity of 280 items. So by solving for the average cost per item, right, which is your total cost, total, total cost, divided by my total quantity, right? I'm going to get an average of $1.5343, right? And this is where we're going to talk about the using equal round and formulas like that in Excel to get um, the best answers possible, okay? So in this case, that's what I solved for that. My average is going to be $1.5343. So it's pretty straightforward now that I have my good, my cost of goods, uh, my, sorry, cost per item or my average cost per item. Now all I have to do is solve for one answer and one answer only. What is my cost of goods sold? If I sold 220 toys at an average cost of $1.5343, I should get a total of $337.54. Okay. Which then, since I know what that is, I just solve for my ending inventory, which is going to be $92.06 remaining for the 60 items there, okay? And that's it, okay? Any questions? So once again, you're going to complete your conversion entry exactly how we told we said before, right? You're going to take the information that you're given and you're just going to pretty much, um, you're going to pretty much plug in all the numbers here. Okay. So let's go ahead and do a little quick wrap up review of comprehending how, uh, comprehending and comparing how each method worked, okay? So in this case, right, it just depends on what kind of product that you sell. But um, for the past um, couple of um, exercises, right, or that we've done the, uh, the, through the PowerPoints, right, this is comparing the difference and the difference between them, right? Notice that the goods available are all going to be the same, right? They're all going to start with three, uh, 200 toys at $304. However, your ending balances and your cost of goods sold is going to be reflecting different numbers, right? In the very first one, FIFO, right? Since we got rid of our more cheaper items, right? We ended up having um, a total ending inventory of $123.20 while we kind of um, sold $180.80, okay? Whereas when we did LIFO, right, we end up selling the more expensive ones first, right? So that's why um, we are at uh, 120 um, and we end up saving the more expensive ones. No, wait, for the first one, yeah, 
but the last one's uh, in and the first ones are out to go, we actually end up getting rid of the more expensive ones. And that's, that's why it's uh, 184 instead of opposed to 180. Okay. And then, of course, the weighted average is going to basically be um, we treated every single item as, as one, right? We treated as one unit. So in this case, right, we end up getting an average in between of 182.40 for the cost of goods sold, um, while ending inventory was 121.60. So in this case, right, comparing and contrasting as far as determining which one's better for you, it really depends. It depends on the product that you sell, okay, and which one works easiest best for you. Now, most common one to do is going to be weighted average because if you're really boggling down on keeping track of every single item, right, and let's say it's an item that you're purchasing quite frequently, right, you know, um, it might be overall easier to just use um, weighted average because at that point, all you're dealing is with just with one number. You're not keeping track of which batches came first or which batches came last. You're just adding them all up and finding the total from there. So that's just a more common practice. But once again, FIFO is more commonly for grocery stores. LIFO is more commonly for electronic stores, while weighted average, right, is pretty straightforward. It's common for any kind of natural resources that frequently, like, get sold out often or gets purchased and that, you know, like something like water bottles, okay? So that's that right there. Now, last review I have for you is just understanding how we actually calculate each and every single one. So the first one that we took a look at was FIFO, right? Um, FIFO, we started from the top and made our way down to the bottom, right? As far as batches of inventory. Whereas LIFO, we started from the bottom and made our way up to the top, which is the very uh, beginning of our inventory, okay? Where average cost per item, or I'm sorry, where for weighted average, we don't care which batch came first, we don't care which batch came last, we decided to just clump them all together and get a grand total and um, calculate the average cost and um, just start costing it um, based on the average, okay? So any questions? Go ahead and dive into our first exercise here. So once again, these are the same exact numbers. So I'm not going to have you guys go through the whole process where you have to um, journalize it anymore because it's all going to be the same. So first thing, so we're just going to go straight ahead into our inventory worksheet. Um, so here... Um, is 5.3 uh, part, this is the first exercise that we have here. So question number one, okay, your inventory method is going to be periodic and it is weighted average, okay? So on April 5th, we purchased 1,000 units, okay, at um, $5 each with the freight costing $100, okay? So here's our inventory worksheet, okay? So we said that on April 5th, we purchased a total of 1,000 units at $5 each, okay? With a freight costing $100, okay? So in this case, what is going to be my total cost? Or, I'm sorry, what is my total purchase price? $5,000 plus $100 gives me a total cost of? $5,100. Now, since we already know that we're going to make purchases of a bunch of inventory, you have the choice if you want to do your cost per item because this is the first batch of inventory that you have but you don't really necessarily have to do it because it doesn't matter, okay? So then let's talk about the next one, okay? So let's see what the next one said, okay? On April 10, we purchased 750 items at $5.75 each with a uh, freight cost of 75. Okay. So... April 10, 
we purchased 750 units at five dollars and 75 cents with the freight of 75. okay so what's my per total purchase price here $4,312.50. Okay, plus, 50, plus $75. Good. All right. And then let's go on to the next one since we don't need to solve for the average cost per item yet. Okay. So then on April 20th, we purchased 200 units at $6 each with a freight costing you $20. So April 20th, 200 at $6 with a freight costing $20. So what's my purchase price here? Twelve hundred plus twenty. One thousand two hundred and twenty. Good. One thousand two hundred and twenty. Okay. Let's see what else. Then on April twenty fifth, we purchased a total of five hundred units at six dollars and twenty five cents each, with the freight costing fifty. So five hundred at six twenty five and five and fifty dollars. Oops, wrong inventory worksheet. There we are. It is four twenty-five. We purchased five hundred units at six twenty-five, with the freight costing fifty. So, what's my total purchase price here? What's my? Oh no, sorry, I added them the other way. Okay. Okay. So three thousand one hundred twenty-five plus fifty dollars. What's my total cost? Thirty-one seventy-five. Thirty-one seventy-five. Okay. Let's look at our inventory. Okay, so last thing here we have is on April thirtieth. You have a total of six hundred units on hand. So here we reach the end of our. Um, end of our accounting period. So in this case, right, we need to sum up our totals. So what is the total amount of purchases I made? 2,450. 2,450, okay. What's my total purchase price? My total total purchase price? Uh, 13,637. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then what is my total freight? Two forty-five. Two forty-five, and then what is my total total cost? Thirty thousand eight hundred and eighty-two point five. Okay, so then now, last thing that we have to do is here, right? Now that we totaled up our total quantity and our total total cost, right? All I have left to do is now solve for my average cost per item. In this case, right, I know that my net purchases is going to be my total goods available, right? So in this case, what is going to be my average cost per item? Okay. 5.666. How did you solve for that? 
13,882.5 divided by 2,450. Good. To give you a total of 5.6663. Very good. Good. So this is where I'm going to teach you guys to how to use the equal round uh, when we solve for the cost of goods sold. Okay. All right, so good. Now that we have our numbers, right, let's plug in and solve for our net purchases, okay? So obviously, right, we purchased 2,450 units at a total of 13,637.50. Um, for this case, right, we're assuming that there is no purchase returns and allowances. Okay, so that's going to be giving you the same exact numbers. We know that freight doesn't add to quantity, but it does add to um, cost, okay? So in this case, right, my, good, my net purchases is going to be 2,450 items at 13,882.50, right? Which once again, we don't have beginning inventory. So that means when I carry down my net purchases, right, I'm going to add zero to it, and that's going to make my goods available be the same as my net purchases, okay? And we were given that at the end of April 30th, we had a total of 600 units available, okay? So in this case... How much is going to be the amount that I sold? What's my cost of goods sold? How many items did I sell? One thousand eight hundred fifty. Eight thousand. Yes, eighteen fifty. Okay. And now that we have eight, eight, 1850, right? So this is what I'm going to do. That's all the number I need, right? It's just the 1850. And I know by calculating the number, right, that we're going to take our total cost of 138250 um, eight, and divide that by our total quantity of to 450 right that we solved from up there right our average cost per item okay so now all we have to do is solve for what my total cost of goods sold is going to be for now this is what i'm going to teach you since i'm teaching you to keep every penny even if it's uh do not to not to round too early or too late in this case, if I round it too early, right, I'm costing at a more expensive price where every third of an item that I sell, I can easily uh, gain, a, I can get easily gain a dollar. So in this case, because I'm selling thousands of items, right, that easily right there could determine that I could have lost a lot of extra money. So that's why I'm telling you not to round your, your, um, costs per item but I do need you to round your total um, cost of goods sold because in reality right you can't cost or sell um, 0.6 of a penny right you have to unfortunately round up so in this case that's exactly what I'm going to show you to do because right now I can punch into the calculator um, this whole entire amount and you're going to determine two decimal places afterwards. So in this case, right, my formula here is going to be equal round, okay? So that means I'm gonna, I'm gonna have my formula and round it off by two decimal places. So in this case, equal round. I'm gonna take my 1850, and I'm gonna multiply it by my 5.6632653, right? And then I'm going to finish my argument, which is my equation. And I said, I want to round this to, the, to two decimal places, or in this case, to the nearest penny. Okay, so 
when I and then I have to finish my um, formula with the closing parentheses or in some case um, Excel can pick it up if you just press enter but in this case right that's what I'm gonna do my formula here is I'm going to equal round I'm gonna I'm gonna my equation is going to multiply my quantity times my um, cost per item comma two and then enter and that should tell me that I'm going to um, it's gonna cost me a total of ten thousand dollars four hundred eighty two and seventy cents okay and that's pretty straightforward we can just copy that information over and instead of recalculating that same amount we can just easily solve for our ending inventory to be three thousand three three hundred ninety nine dollars and eighty cents okay so once again to solve for the formula it's going to be equal round because everything needs to be in terms of dollar so once again you cannot um you cannot sell 69.999999 of a penny it has to be rounded up okay to 70. okay so there we have it now you have to be very careful when you're doing average costing because you could have a split penny and um, when you have a split penny you have to make that executive decision are you going to charge more or are you going to take out more okay or so round are we going to round our cost of goods sold or are we going to round our um inventory on hand and you have to be careful because that's where you can create um pennies out of nowhere because 20 minus 5 does not give you 6. okay so think of it that way okay so there we have it and that's it that's how we solve for our moving average for this case okay. any questions So let's go ahead and complete our conversion entry real quick. So conversion entry, here's general journal. Okay. okay, so what are we supposed to be journalizing here for the conversion entry? Mm hmm Cost of good uh, sold. What else? Purchase expense. And what else? I am the freight. Okay. So let's start with the very first one. What was the total cost of my ending inventory? Thirteen. Ending inventory. Ending. Uh, three thousand three hundred ninety-nine point eight. Okay. Mm -hmm. What was the total cost of my goods sold? Ten thousand four hundred eighty-two and seventy cents. Good. What was my total purchases? Total purchases is worth thirteen thousand six hundred thirty-seven point five. Okay, and what was my total freight? Two forty-five. Two forty-five. Two forty-five. Okay, so let's go ahead and double check to make sure that my numbers match on each side. So I got thirteen eight eight two fifty on the left, and I have. Thirteen eight eight two fifty on the right. Good. Good. And once again, you can go ahead and make a note here saying to convert 
inventory. Good. So, let's continue on with our scenario because this time, right, we're going to be continuing inventory um, exercises, okay? So, your inventory method is still periodic and it's weighted average. So, in this case, right, it's April 30th. And we have a total of 600 units on hand. So let's go ahead and plug those numbers in, right? Because we have beginning inventory. So we need to place this on the inventory on hand. We have a total of 600 units. Now, what was my total cost? That's the that's the good avail goods available. This is this is uh, beginning inventory. This is what I'm carrying over for my six hundred units I have left. Oh, so thirty three ninety nine eighty. Mm hmm. Okay. Now because this is going to be like this, we're going to go ahead, um, right, um, and just solve for the average cost per item here, just so then we know that this right here is five dollars and six six um right we know that 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 that's this number right here okay not that it matters because at the end of the day we're going to add up our total numbers together anyways but you know this is just so that we know where this number came from and what the totals was and how we're able to um you know solve for this number okay so in this case that's all we need because that's all the total we have here, right? No batches of inventory necessary. All we do is just add in our beginning inventory, which is our ending inventory for the previous one, okay? And now let's go ahead and solve, uh, or I guess um, do the purchases of inventory now. So starting off with the first one, okay. May on May fifth, right? We purchased five hundred units at six twenty five with a freight of five dollars. So what's my purchase price? Three thousand one hundred twenty-five. Three thousand one hundred twenty-five. What's my total cost? Three thousand one hundred twenty-five. Good. Okay. Then on May ten, we purchased eight hundred units at six dollars each with a freight of eighty. So what's my purchase price here? Forty-eight hundred. Forty-eight hundred plus eighty dollars. Forty-eight eighty. Forty-eight eighty. Good. Okay. Then on May twentieth, right? We purchased three hundred units at six dollars and fifteen cents each. Uh, with a freight costing fifteen. Okay, so three hundred at six fifteen. Okay, so what's my purchase price here? Eighteen hundred forty-five. Good. 
if you have read N16. Good. Second to, la second to last is on May 25th. We purchased 100 units at $5, or sorry, 100 units at $6.30 with the freight costing $5. So let's plug those numbers in there. Okay, so it's five twenty-five one hundred at six dollars and thirty cents with a freight of five. So what's my total purchase price here? Six hundred and thirty. Six thirty plus five gives me a total cost of six thirty-five. Six thirty-five. Okay. Last but not least, in our scenario we have here, on May 31st, okay, we have a total of 400 units available on hand. Okay, so 400 units. Okay. So let's go ahead and solve for our total purchases. So how many items in grand total did we purchase? Seventeen hundred. Seventeen hundred, okay, at a grand total purchase price of Ten thousand four hundred. Ten thousand four hundred. Okay, with a okay of one fifty. Sorry. And yep. Good. Okay. Now here we can't solve for the average cost per item because what do we have? We have beginning inventory. So in this case, we don't need to solve it for here because. We can't because you're going to end up changing it the number anyway because you have now beginning inventory that you need to consider. So let's go ahead and just fill in the information down below and let's calculate what our total um, goods available are so then we can go ahead and uh, find out what our average cost per item is. Okay. So once again, we're going to carry our information down because um, in this case, we're going to assume there's no re returns and allowances. Okay, so that makes it zero. However, um, we need to add our freight in here because freight was 150. Okay, so therefore, our total net purchases is for 1700 at 10550. Okay. All right, so now let's go ahead and carry the information, right? We had beginning inventory. What was it? It's 100. 600 at a total of 3,899 dollars oh, $3, 80 We're going to carry our information that we saw from our previous one, which is our net purchases. So then, what is the total amount of goods available that we have? $2,300. At a total cost of? $13,949.80. Good. So this number is important because now we can actually solve for our average cost per item because in this case, right, we have a new total quantity of 2300 right? And we also have a um, total cost of thirteen nine four nine eighty. So in this case, right, we are able to solve that our average cost per item is going to be, you're going to take your 13,949.80, 9, 
and you're going to divide it amongst the total of 2,300 units. So in this case, I have an average cost of $6.651304. And this number is important because that's what's going to help us solve for our total cost of goods sold. So in this case, if I started out with 2300 and I sold X amount so, and I have 400 left, how many items did I sell? 1900 1900 So there we go. We're going to take our 1900 right? And we know by calculating our average cost per item is going to cost me $6.651304. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and do my equal round here. All right, so equal round, right, that's the formula I'm using. I'm going to enter in my first thing, which is going to be my quantity times my cost per item. So in this case, I'm doing the equation first. What am I trying to solve? I'm trying to solve for whatever quantity times the unit price is, all right? Then I'm gonna end my argument with a comma, okay? And I want to, to, to place it into two decimal places, or in this case, the nearest penny. So I put two, enter, and I should get $11,523.75. Okay. So therefore, how much is going to be my total ending inventory? Twenty-four twenty-six oh five. Good. Okay. And there we have it. Okay. So let's go ahead and play, uh, do our journal once again. So it's going to look identical to our previous one here. But the only difference is... that I have a beginning inventory, right? So therefore, I have beginning inventory. So let's go ahead and plug our numbers in. What was the total cost of my ending inventory? What was the total cost of goods sold? What was my total purchases? Good. What was my total freight? And last but not least, what it was my total beginning inventory? A six hundred at three thousand three hundred ninety nine dollars. Okay. Once again, just to double confirm, we need our total debits to match our total credits. So I have a total debit of thirteen nine oh nine eighty. Okay, and a total credit of thirteen nine oh nine nine four nine, excuse me, eighty. Okay. So once again to convert inventory, okay? And that is it.
Average costing is the easiest one. Any questions? All right, so I have this for you here. Um, another example. So in this case, I already filled the information for you. So all we're going to really do is just um, calculate our ending um, balance here. So in this case, right, our scenario says that at the end of June 15, we have a total of 500 units. So 500 is going to be here, all right? So let's take a look here. How do we solve for our purchase price for the first one? If, we, if on June 1st, we purchase 1,500 units at a total of $1.30 each. Nineteen hundred fifty. Good. Plus two hundred. Two thousand one hundred fifty. Good. Okay. If on June if on June fifth I purchased seven hundred units at a dollar thirty five, what's my total purchase price? Point five five. I don't see where you got fifty five cents. Nine forty five. I mean, seven hundred times a dollar thirty five. Sorry, it was a typo. I did six ninety three. Oh, okay. Good. Uh, last but not least, I mean, yeah. What's my total cost? Is if I have to add a hundred dollars, what's my total cost? Okay. All right, then on June 8th, I purchased 950 units at $1.32. Okay. Plus $120 for free. All right, three more, guys. We're almost there. Okay, on June 10, we purchased 1,200 units at $1.30. Okay. Plus 150 $150 worth of freight. One thousand seven hundred and ten. Okay. Well, um, on June twelfth, I purchased eight hundred units at a dollar twenty-five. One thousand. Good. Plus a hundred. Um, eleven hundred. Eleven hundred. Okay. Last but not least, on June fourteenth, I purchased five hundred fifty units at a dollar thirty. Should give you seven hundred plus seventy gives you seven eighty-five. Good. So let's go ahead and sum up our totals here because now we are done with my table. So what is my total amount that I purchased?
Schreigen. So 700 plus 950 should be 1650, plus 1200 should be 2850, plus 800, 36, plus 550, 4150, plus 550, Should be 57. Did you get five five thousand seven hundred? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Okay. And then my total purchase price? Seven thousand four hundred and twenty-four. Good. Plus my freight. What's my total freight? Seven hundred forty. Seven hundred forty, and then gives me a total total cost of. Eight thousand one hundred sixty-four. Eight thousand one hundred sixty-four. So here, um, since. All right, the assumption here is we don't have any uh, returns and allowances. So here, let's do this. So we purchase a total of 5,700 items at 7424 okay? No purchase returns or allowances, so therefore, same numbers here, okay? Freight cost zero. I mean, freight adds zero, but it cost me seven hundred forty dollars. So then, therefore, should bring me a total of um, five thousand seven hundred items. Add a total of oops, I subtracted. Excuse me. I need to add them together. Eight thousand one hundred sixty-four. Okay. So again. Assuming we have no beginning inventory, so therefore, by copy and pasting my net purchases, if I add zero to each one, it's going to be my goods available is 7000 at $8,164, okay? So what you could do here is you could solve for your average cost per item, which we know to be... Um, Right, that we only have a we have eight thousand one hundred sixty four dollars, with a total quantity of five thousand seven hundred. So therefore, what is going to be my average cost per item? Oh, that's good. That's good. So then if I, if I have a total ending inventory of 500 units, right, then what, then how many items did I sell? What's my cost of goods sold? 5,200, $5, okay. And in this case, if I sold 5,200 items at $1.43228, okay, then what should be my total cost of goods sold? Seven four four seven point eight six. Good. Good. Excellent. Okay. So then that should leave me with a total ending balance of 71614. Okay. And of course, you're going to go ahead and do your conversion entry here. 
So what was my ending inventory again? Whoa, that's too big. Let me. Okay. So what was my ending inventory? Cost of my ending inventory. And my total cost of cost of goods sold. Total purchases. Seventy-four twenty-four. Mm -hmm. And what was my total freight? Seven forty. Good. And of course, we don't have beginning inventory, so in this case. I should balance that I have 8,164 on the left, and I should have the same exact on the right, okay? Good job. Any questions? No. All right. So there you go. That wraps up 5.5, okay? This is weighted average. Okay. So...